always quiet these days along Ellsford Road in Factorydale, Nova Scotia, but that wasn't the case 50 years ago when this area was the scene of one of the Annapolis Valley's more interesting and at the time terrifying ghost stories. We're in Factorydale, Nova Scotia today along the Ellsford Road, or formerly known as Parker Road, where this month marks the 50th anniversary of the Parker Road Phantom, which was the brainchild of five boys back in 1969 that gained national headlines after what started as a harmless prank became something much bigger than anticipated and terrified multiple people from around the area. And today, Swinomer Media has met up with the original Phantoms behind this little piece of Annapolis Valley history. Hey, it was a Friday night and it was just a bunch of young teenagers looking around for something to do in the valley. <coughs> and so we thought, actually what we first thought was that there was an old bearskin up in the attic, in, the, in Grammy's attic, and that's what I went looking for. So come to find out, no, there wasn't any bearskin. So. I found that old coat hanging on the wall. So I dropped that down to the boys. <laughs> and, and then we thought, what are we going to do with this coat? So three guys would go <clears throat> in the barn with a door lock, and Billy and I would stand out here dressed up and waiting for a vehicle to come. So we heard this car coming down the road, and it was a convertible car with four women in it. And, and they were all just talking very, very loud. <laughs> <laughs> and we stood down halfway between the two houses here and Billy he's there <coughs> waving his hands because the coat was about this far beyond his hands so he's doing one of these and the car comes along and all of a sudden the girls stop talking and then the brakes come on and the car's sliding down the road tires screeching. And the height of this thing was no, six, eight, ten feet, twelve feet tall. It got yep. grew this way, and it was big this way. And Floated it twenty, thirty and miles an hour. Boys, yeah. it did everything a thing, anything to do. You know, like <laughs> amazing. Cops come in, beat the horn. Come here. Come on back. <laughs> come here. Yeah, come here. Yeah, yeah. Got in the back seat. You know anything about this fan? Nope. He said, "I want to show you something. Might change your mind." A trunk, come out, double barrel shotgun. And there was two guys in my class that they were going to go up and shoot this phantom. And after the boys had their fun playing the phantom, which lasted less than a month, it was finally time to confess and tell the truth about what people were actually seeing lurking in the shadows. So he started writing. There was two cops in the car. He'd write for about two minutes and then burst right out laughing. <laughs> I, I said, where do you want to start? Where do you want to start? He said, yeah. That's where I started. Over half an hour to write three pages because they were laughing more than they were writing stuff down. <laughs> they had on CTV. They had a woman that was psychic, yeah, uh, and psychics and phantoms and ghosts and stuff. And that was about a 15-minute interview. And I, back then, it was a black and white television with two channels. And she said, "Well, I said what it's doing? I would say it's black and it's evil." <laughs> And if you ha have a cross with you, and you confront it, hold it in front of you, and say any prayer of the Bible, and I'll leave you alone. Well, that time I was on the floor crying, <laughs> laughing so hard. And although this ghost story in the end was nothing more than five boys trying to prank their grandparents, the overall impact of this story and just how far it reached will always have a special place in our local history. And as for the five phantoms, even after all these years, they're just happy to be able to share their side of this truly local ghost story. Reporting in Factory Dale, Nova Scotia for Swinomer Media, I'm Ian Swinomer, and thanks for watching.